What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Basotho people of Southern Africa. And as always, if you want to support the Home Team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique, illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. The Basotho people are one of the primary Bantu ethnic groups of Southern Africa, mostly residing in the modern-day region of Lesotho and South Africa. They're believed to have settled in the territory of modern South Africa by about 500 CE, but their presence in the Southern African region goes back much further. The majority of the Basotho today are now Christians, but many still follow the Basotho religion, which they share with the Toswana people. The souls of the dead are believed to have the power to influence the lives of the living, and the Basotho make offerings to these Badimo to thank them for their help or to ask them for assistance. The Basotho also have professional alternative medical practitioners who employ a wide range of herbal medicines and rituals to cure diseases, bring good luck and fertility, and protect people from misfortune. In South Africa, the health authorities have come to recognize the value of these health workers. Instead of trying to obliterate such practices, which were scorned under apartheid, the government has tried to incorporate them into the official health system at the community level. Workshops and courses are provided to give them a wider healthcare education. The Basotho have a rich culture of poetry, song, dance, and storytelling. This includes Lithoko, or praise poems, Lafella, songs describing life of migrant laborers, and Tumelano, in which groups of people sing together in harmony. One of the greatest mythical heroes of the Basotho people is Ditolain. The following is an account of his legend. At the time of Ditolain's birth, a fearful beast named Kamapa had devoured almost all of humanity. The only human left alive was Ditolain's mother, who had hidden herself. When her child was born, he had a necklace of divining charms around his neck, a necklace of power. Because of this, she named the boy Ditolain, or Diviner. In the time it took for her to gather straw for a bed, the boy grew to adult size and was able to speak wisely. Ditolain noticed the emptiness of the world and questioned his mother about it. When she told him about Kamapa, Ditolain took a sword and went in search of this monster. Kamapa swallowed Ditolain, but the hero was not harmed. He used his sword to slash the monster's intestines, and Kamapa fell dead. When Ditolain cut his way out of the beast's body, everyone who had been devoured by Kamapa emerged with him. However, rather than being grateful for Ditolain, the people he had freed feared him and plotted to kill him. Ditolain's skill at divination gave him advance warning, so people's attempts to kill him failed. One day, when he was being pursued by his enemies, Ditolain turned himself into a stone. Frustrated by his inability to find Ditolain, one of the warriors picked up the stone and threw it across the river. The stone turned back into Ditolain, and he went on his way. I find it interesting how the story of their mythical hero Ditolain may actually reflect their own history, as the Basotho were forced from their homeland and tried to thrive somewhere else. Over 2,000 years ago, the Basotho developed a way of life based on farming and ironworking. They gradually spread southward and settled on the high veld and in the valleys of the Orange Val and Tugela rivers. They slowly absorbed the existing population, the Khoisan, adopting many aspects of their culture including elements of their language and many of their musical instruments. By about 1400, the Basotho had established their main clans. Each clan adopted an animal such as a wildcat, porcupine, or a crocodile as its symbol or totem. Groups of these clans eventually came together to form the three major divisions of the Basotho people, the Northern Basotho, the Southern Basotho, and the Twasana or Western Basotho. The Twaswana are now generally viewed as a separate ethnic group from the other Basotho peoples. During the 17th century, the Petty group of clans became dominant among the northern Basotho and established the Bapeti Empire, which lasted for over 200 years. During the same period, 
the southern Basotho were living in an age of relative peace and prosperity. The Basotho people began to establish large towns with stone-built homes. They engaged in intensive agriculture and raised large herds of cattle. Cattle came to play an important part of social values being held in high regard amongst the Basotho people. Modern history of both the Basotho and the Tosuana began with the so-called Great Crushing, caused by the expansion of the Zulu under their great leader Shaka. In 1816, Shaka became the ruler of the Zulu, and by 1818, he had embarked on his policy of creating an empire. As the Zulus expanded, conquering and destroying those who opposed them, many of the peoples of the nearby areas tried to flee, causing a ripple effect that reached as far north as the Lake District of Kenya and Tanzania. The Kingdom of the Sotho was formed out of the destructive wars of the 1820s. The Kaona clan, under the celebrated leadership of Moshweshwe, was able to bring together a desperate group of displaced people under the kingdom's protection. Using the promise of protection, land, and cattle, Moshweshwe was able to gradually draw together a large number of followers who became known as the Basotho. King Moshweshwe extended his power and became the dominant leader in the southern high veld. One of the hallmarks of Basotho culture is certainly their attire or fashion. The Basotho blanket, also known as the Sienna Morena, is a distinctive form of a woolen blanket traditionally worn by the Basotho people and unique to the kingdom of Lesotho. This Basotho style gained international attention when it was featured on the border tribe in the Black Panther movie. Wakabi, the chief of the Wakandan security, as well as others, appear in several scenes wearing the Basotho blanket. The way that Lesotho men wear these traditional blankets is founded on the traditional karos, an animal skin cape, although their transformation to factory woven textile is attributed to King Moshweshwe of the late 19th century. Across the kingdom, a variety of these blankets are worn by the people of Lesotho to represent the different rites of passage in their society. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.